What's going on everyone? It's KT Pop here, coming at you with a brand new video. Today, we finally have the big video that I've been talking about for weeks. Now, I've been a huge fan of Stray Kids from the start of 2019. Yay! I actually got to make it spin on the first time. Fucking skills, mate. That's the measure of a true stay. Stray Kids were really the group that kickstarted my crazy spiral into the world of K-pop. They really made me appreciate the music more, but then they also made me start buying albums and photo cards, watching the choreography, and then eventually learning to dance myself. I was also lucky enough to go to their concert back in Melbourne in 2019 at a relatively small venue. I'm so, so appreciative that I did that now because I even got to do like a proper high touch with all the members and it was like super reasonably priced at the time, blessed. Seeing as we have a Stray Kids comeback real, real soon, I thought it'd be really fun to go back and look at all of their previous title tracks and rank them. I've really tried to keep the ranking in terms of just the song and not really think about the outfits or the concept or the time and all that kind of stuff, just the song itself. I tried to keep it to physical releases, like proper comebacks and didn't include mixtapes or all the remixes and collabs. I also thought it would be pretty interesting if I did like a initial ranking where I just didn't really think about it and just looked at the list of songs and just from my heart ranked them. This took me about four minutes in the end which I thought was pretty quick. Yeah, too quick. Too quick. <laughs> <You're> sus. <laughs> I then took some time, sat properly with the songs, listened to them a few times and really thought about it and came up with my final ranking. Now, this was hard, but I had so much fun going back and spending time with these amazing songs. To make it a little more interesting, I'm not gonna go from my least favorite to favorite. I'm actually gonna go in order of release date. Just a little disclaimer, I love Stray Kids and do not promote negativity towards them or any other group. This is purely my personal opinion on which songs I like the most. Feel free to let me know which songs are your favorite in the comments down below. But please, let's keep it posy vibes only because K-pop is supposed to be fun. Fun! Fun! So let's travel back in time to 2017 with the Stray Kids pre-debut song, Elevator. My initial ranking for Elevator was 13. It was a very impressive song for the time. I don't think anyone had really heard anything like this, especially from a debut group. It's a very like simple song when you listen to it properly, but even though it has that simplicity, it doesn't feel hollow. I think one of my favorite things about this song is Lino's little rap part. I really love Lino. He's my bias in Stray Kids. So I love that he got to shine in this song in that respect. However, I think that this song has suffered a bit of over listening for me. So I don't find it as interesting and punchy as I used to. I still really love it though. And especially seeing it live was incredible. Like a real iconic emotional moment, I think for most days that were at the concert. After reviewing and analyzing all the songs, my final ranking for Elevator is 16. So let's move into March, 2018 with the release of District 9 on the album, I Am Not. My initial ranking for District 9 was 10. <laughs> Not nine, 10. Would have been cool if it ranked at nine. I think District 9 really showed the kind of path that Stray Kids were gonna take in the future. It feels a lot more Stray Kids than Elevator. The intro of this song makes me feel so freaking pumped as soon as I hear it. A couple of my favorite parts in this song is the Han Chungbin rap verse in this. I think it's super, super strong. It really shows how talented they were even back in 2018. There's also a really great use of Felix's deep voice. We finally get some really good vocals from him. And of course, the iconic Stray Kids everywhere all around the world yelling in the middle of the song. Absolutely iconic obsessed. My final ranking for District 9 is 15. The next track we got from Stray Kids was My Pace in August 2018 from the album I Am Who. My initial ranking for My Pace was 15. I really like My Pace because it really shows Stray Kids fun, playful, youthful side. I really don't think anyone can dislike my pace because it is just so catchy and sing-alongable and it just makes me really happy when I hear it. Is sing-alongable a word? I've written that. I've literally typed sing-alongable. <laughs> yes, sing-alongable is now a word. <laughs> sing-alongable. On review of the songs, my pace moved up to a final ranking of 13. 
Only two months later, in October, we got the song I Am You from the album I Am You. I am you. Me and you. My initial ranking for I Am You was 18. I think Stray Kids were really experimenting with a lot of different types of music at the time. This one definitely was quite different to the previous releases. I think at the time I didn't completely vibe with the song. So when I listen to it now, I don't really have that connection to it. One part I really love about the song though is the part where there's a very melodic rap over kind of like a normal rap verse. I think that's a really nice contrast and really adds to the song in a positive way. After reviewing the songs, I Am You stayed pretty consistent and my final ranking is 19. It's a brand new year, March 2019, and we have the release of Miro from the album Clay One Miro. My initial ranking for Miro was nine. Nine. I think this song is quite special to me because I would say that by this point in time, I was a true stay. I had just seen them in concert and I was like all in on Stray Kids. I was obsessed. To me, this song signifies like a bit of a shift in Stray Kids. It really sort of showed more of their true colors, I think. I'm really here for like the messy noise music vibes of this song. It's just such a fucking anthem, like iconic. On the listen back, Miro actually moved up a fair bit and my final ranking for Miro is six. Moving forward to June 2019, we had the release of Side Effects from the album Clay 2 Yellowwood. Hey! My initial ranking of Side Effects was... Two! I wonder if anyone's surprised by this. It's the best! Now I'm getting excited. <laughs> it zoomed in like 200%. Okay, boomer. Dude, this song is so freaking good. I remember losing my goddamn mind when I heard this song for the first time. I pretty much love everything about this song. I think it's such a great use of EDM in a K-pop song. It really kind of opened my eyes to what K-pop could be. It's got a lot going on. It still has that kind of noise music vibe and it's got really nice like BPM changes throughout that just keeps it feeling like really fresh and interesting. There's such an awesome build up in the pre-chorus up to the chorus and you get that massive yell before it just drops into this fucking crazy shit. One of my favorite parts of the song is obviously the chorus, how it's got all this common side effects being said in the background. Like it's just a guy speaking and listing off common side effects of medication. I just think it's so fucking crazy that they put that in a K-pop song. Even though the song is pretty hectic, it still has those nice like melodic breaks in the song to make it feel not so chaotic. It's just such a good song and I really, really want to learn the choreo because I want to just like flail my arms around. <laughs> Side effects did not move positions and my final ranking is two. Keeping to their regular release schedule, October 2019 brought us Double Knot. <laughs> Now this was actually only a digital single, but I really wanted to talk about it in this list. It's my video and I do the fuck I want. My initial ranking of Double Knot was a very high three. It's like a two and a half. Two and a half. Thinking of this song gives me really nostalgic feelings. It was quite a difficult time to be a stay back then. There was a lot of things going on that we won't get into, but I have like a very emotional connection to this song. I really like this kind of electronic sound that they've gone with here. It's like quite dark and ominous. There's not like a lot going on in the song, but it does a lot with a little, if that makes sense. This had a pretty good English version release as well. Um, the lyrics were like a little awkward because it's like, I tighten my double nut. At the time, everyone was a bit like, what the hell is going on with these lyrics? But I actually quite enjoy the English version as well. One of my favorite parts of the song is the really low rap part that Changbin does. It just sounds so like dark and ominous, but just so pleasing to the ear. The song has like a really nice build up. You don't really think that the song can get like any more lit, but then it does. And the end just kind of explodes into this craziness. I honestly feel like this song could have been a proper title track. However, in my proper review, this did drop a little, and I think this is due to the fact that it's just lost its impact a little bit, and a lot of the feelings that I have around it are very nostalgia-based. 
So when I listen to it now, it's not so impactful. My final ranking for Double Knot is eight. December 2019 brought us Levanta from the album Clay Levanta. My initial ranking for Levanta was 16. What did I say about Levanta? I've got a little bit of a confession to make here. I actually listened to the English version of this song more than I did the Korean version. I really enjoyed the lyrics and I found it really fun to try and sing along. However, this song is freaking difficult to sing and I absolutely cannot hit those notes. It just really is such a nice melody throughout the entire song. And I really think Jisung shone so brightly in this song. He did so many vocals in this song. He usually raps, but he really stood up and showed what he could do as a vocalist. This sounds a little bit strange, but my favorite part of the song is actually the end. And it's when it just goes, ah, 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 ah. like the final little melodic break, I think is just really gorgeous. So that is my favorite part. When it's over. No, not because when it's over. I actually like that part. Levanta stayed pretty steady and my final ranking is 17. Moving into May 2020, we got our first Japanese single, Top. My initial ranking for Top was 14. This song does seem quite different for Stray Kids, but it still does feel like them. It definitely has like anime vibes and I really love the violins throughout the whole song. I'm actually kind of obsessed with violins in any song, so I really freaking love that. Especially the violins over Hyunjin's verse. I think that sounds really, really beautiful. I really think this could have performed well as a Korean title track as well. Overall, a really great opening for them for their first Japanese song. My final ranking for top did not change and it stayed at 14. Next. June 2020. God's Menu from the album Go Live. I am very excited because God's Menu, my initial ranking, number one. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, God's Menu. What can I say about God's Menu? Hopefully something. <laughs> this is the perfect Stray Kids song. If you don't agree with me, that's fine, but you're also wrong because it is the best Stray Kids song ever. It's so iconic. It is such a banger. Every time this comes on, I just feel like I'm gonna like jump out of my skin <laughs> with excitement. I'm just obsessed with it still. It's been out for what, 2020, like four years? And I still listen to it now and it feels like I'm listening to it for the first time. And I think that's a real good judge of an amazing song is like, it just feels the same every time you listen to it. I really have nothing bad to say about this song. I think everything is great. Like the melody, the rap, the intensity of the song, just it's perfect. This is peak Stray Kids for me and no one can change my mind. I mean, I think everyone loves God's Menu, but I think I just, <laughs> I don't know. The obsession I feel for it is a bit mental, to be honest. To no one's surprise, after all the reviews, the analysis, the listens, the sitting, the everything, my final ranking for God's Menu, number one. What? <laughs> I feel like even you know that song. It's a song that's like, do, 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 do. Dun, 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 dun. No? I also had a really good time learning the choreo for that song. God's Menu, number one. So yeah, we've done number one. It's like literally bang in the middle. September of the same year, we get Backdoor from the album In Life. Is that the bum song? Yeah, you like to call it that. Backdoor. Oh, I'm doing all the choreo wrong. Backdoor. My initial ranking for Backdoor was five. The bangers just continue. I think this period of time for Stray Kids was amazing. Everything they brought out was just back-to-back -back bangers. I think what I really like about this song is how simple the chorus is. There's literally only about three different sounds, I think, that they use in the chorus. To use that little and make it sound that epic, I think it's just incredible. Another standout for me in this song is Sung Min's vocals. I honestly think that this is the best he's ever sounded. That pre-chorus is insane. I also really love that the back end of this song no pun intended. It's just super party vibes. It's so, so enjoyable. Backdoor moved up slightly and my final ranking is four. November 2020, we got the first Japanese mini album with the title track, All In. 
all in. Ba ba da ba ba. Da 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 all in. Uh uh uh. My initial ranking for all in was seven. I listened to this song a lot when it first came out, but I feel like I haven't really listened to it a lot in recent times. And dude, I actually love this song so much. I really like the intro because it's one of those songs where it says the year in the song, so it like automatically ages the song. But I kind of find that iconic. That's what all the like pop rap songs used to do. From like the 90s? Yeah. I love it. Oh my God, this song is so good. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's cool. So I think Stray Kids by now, they're like pretty locked into their vibe and they really just went to Japan and pushed out a banger that really felt like them. And yeah, it was super catchy and really fun. I really love the talking part before the chorus. It kind of sounds like a train announcer or something. I remember specifically learning the Japanese phrase so that I could sing along to it. Then the Korean version came out and I was completely thrown off and so I just didn't really know what to do and I was just like blending the languages together. On review I realized how much I actually love this song and it moved up and my final ranking for All In is 5. Flashing forward a bit now to August of 2021, we got Thunderous from the album No Easy. My initial ranking for Thunderous was six. Sex. Da, 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 da. Thunderous really is one of those songs that has so many things going on throughout the song. Because of this, I feel like you just can't get sick of it. There's just too many things to latch onto. Thunderous has some of the best raps, I think, from all of Stray Kids discography. Changmin's rap at the start is just so punchy and such a good intro to this crazy song. It's really cool that it has these kind of like traditional like Korean elements to the song as well. It's not something that we've seen a lot from Stray Kids up to this point, so it makes it really unique. I think there's just like a lot of really iconic moments in this song, especially like the little laugh part. It's just really fun. It just has a really epic feel to it, and it really gives me the same sort of feelings that I get when I listen to God's Menu. This one I was actually surprised on the listen back how much I actually loved it. Initially I thought, oh yeah, you know, it's in the top 10, but maybe not, you know, top three. But when I went back, I really thought that it was a lot closer to God's Menu than I thought. So my final ranking was three. I listened to it back, I was like, this song is fucking incredible. Like, why did I think it was number six? <sighs> October 2021, we got another Japanese single, Scars. By Papa Roach. Turn my life into pieces. That's not Scars. Oh. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's Papa Roach though, right? Yeah. Okay. How does Scars go? Uh, Scars guard. I tear my heart open. Oh, All right. right. <laughs> that classic. <laughs> my initial ranking for Scars was 20. I think what I like about this song is the melody over the top of the chorus. It is really, really pleasing. However, this kind of song is not really what I tune into Stray Kids for, so it's not my favorite, unfortunately. If I'm listening to Stray Kids, I want to hear God's Menu. I don't want to hear Scars. That's just my opinion. Yeah, if you want to hear Scars, you go to Papa Roach. <laughs> <laughs> my final ranking for Scars is 22. November 2021, we get a super special single, Christmas Evil, just in time for Christmas. My initial ranking for Christmas Evil was 19. So I don't think Stray Kids doing a Christmas song was on everyone's bingo card for that year, but I do kind of unironically love it. It's very cringe, but also kind of a vibe. It's definitely the most Stray Kids Christmas song that could have ever been written. I don't really know how else to phrase that, but if you know, you know. I did actually play this at my family Christmas. Um, I don't think it was super appreciated, but I'm sure there was a lot of stays out there that did the exact same thing. I don't know if you've ever heard this song, but like literally one of the lines in it is, I can feel their evil coming, but for leaks never bad. I think because it is kind of a Christmas song, it didn't feel so much like a proper comeback. And it also doesn't have that high playability factor to it. Well, people don't listen to Mariah Carey in June, do they? All I want for Christmas is you. Christmas Evil held pretty steady and my final ranking was 20. 
2020 Stray Kids building. We're gonna go all in. New year, it's March 2022, and we get Maniac from the album Ordinary. My initial ranking for Maniac was a very high four. In my head, this falls into like the same era as like God's Menu and Thunderous. However, the first time I heard those songs, I was like immediately hooked. Whereas this one, it did take me a couple of listens. I do have very positive thoughts though, like when I think about this song. So I think that's why it ranked at number four. What's cool about this song is the multi-layered vocals in the chorus. I think that's super, super effective and very interesting. However, I feel like there is a little bit of a dip in the sort of craziness factor and the out there factor of Maniac compared to say, God's Menu or Thunderous. So it did feel a little bit less impactful for me. This choreo was like super fun to learn though. Like I really love all the Frankenstein like aspects to it. Like that was amazing. With further review and scrutiny, Maniac dropped to a final ranking of seven. Moving into the second Japanese mini album in June, 2022, we got Circus. <laughs> My initial ranking of Circus was eight. This is a song that I actually really like that I'm not sure a lot of people like as much as I do. I just think it's really, really fun and a bit silly. And I like to see that side of group sometimes. This song coming out around the same time as Maniac makes a lot of sense. Like they have a very similar feeling. Some of my favorite parts, I really love the talk rap that's done by Jisung. I also really love how cleverly the kind of circus theme is used throughout the song. It could be quite cringe, but I think the way that they did it is quite effective. And just the start of the chorus with the, well, welcome to the, like, I just think it's just so catchy and fun. And I just think it's a very underrated song, to be honest. I really do think that I kind of over listened to this song though when it came out so when I listen back to it now it does have a little bit less of an impact for me because of this it did drop a little bit in my rankings and the final ranking for Circus is 11. The next song feels super recent even though it was all the way back in October 2022. We got Case 143 from the album Maxident. Case 143 ranked 12 on my initial rankings. Case 143 really feels like a new era to me. It feels like we've moved on from the thunderous God's Menu kind of era. It's a bit of a different vibe, but it definitely has that stray kids factor to it still. When I first heard it, I was kind of taken off guard a little bit, but I did welcome the change in style. It's very, very pleasant to listen to and it's quite refreshing. I really like the end of the song. There's this kind of alternate version to the chorus, which I think is really refreshing and fun. In my final rankings, it moved up a little bit to a final ranking of 10. Moving to 2023, only last year, we got a Japanese release called The Sound. This was from the first Japanese full album, There. My initial ranking for this song was 22. I really didn't listen to this song a lot when it came out. So when I thought back to it, I really didn't have many memories about it. I actually quite enjoy the verses of the song. I actually like the verses more than the chorus, which is kind of unusual. It's not really the way a song usually goes, but yeah, I find the chorus like quite generic and a little bit boring, unfortunately. However, when I was going back and listening to it, my feet were tapping along, so I must have liked it a bit. I did enjoy this more than I remembered, so my final ranking of the sound went up to 21. Fast forwarding to September 2023, we actually got a, another Japanese release. This was the song Social Path, which actually featured an additional artist called Lisa. My initial ranking of this song was 21. To be honest, this song wasn't really on my radar when it first came out. So I think I only listened to it once with the music video and then I just kind of didn't touch it again. When I listened to it more, I realized that I actually like it a lot more than I thought. I really love Lisa's vocals. I think they really match the song well and she really vibes with Stray Kids. I think it's a very good collab. I also really love drum and bass. So the addition of that kind of sound in there is really appealing to me. However, I think that maybe that aspect wasn't like turned up enough in the mix like it's too in the background and it would have been cool if they'd really uplifted that subtle drum and bass never heard of it yeah it's just super quiet in the mix like i don't understand why they did it like that so i really enjoyed the song a lot more than i remember so this boosted it up a fair bit in the rankings 
My final ranking for Social Path was 18. Next, we move into the two most recent Korean releases. In June 2023, we got S-Class from the album Five Star. My initial ranking for S-Class was 11. This was another one of those Stray Kids songs that took me a couple of listens to get into. The song at the time was panned for being kind of disjointed. There's parts of the song that are super different from one another and it feels like maybe they shouldn't be put together. However, I'm all for a chaotic song, so I actually don't mind this aspect to it. My favorite part by far is like the 90s rap aesthetic part. I think that is just so nostalgic. And the choreo that went along with it was fucking sick. It's one of those songs that has a lot of BPM changes, which I always really enjoy when I'm listening to music. However, this made it extremely annoying when I was trying to learn the choreography. Um, and yeah, to be honest, I really did not enjoy learning this at all. I really tried to not let my like personal experiences or other things come into the ranking of the songs, but it was definitely in my mind because it was so recent that I learned this choreography. My final ranking for S Class is 12. And finally, we have the most recent release from Stray Kids from November 2023, La 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 from the album Rockstar. La 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 La. Just feel the rock. This actually was probably the biggest surprise for me in terms of how my rankings went. My initial ranking for La 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 was 17. When I was thinking about this song for my initial rankings, I really think I was tied up again with how I felt about learning the choreography because it was so recent. Once I separated that from the song and really focused on just the music, I actually really love this song. I think it was really smart of Stray Kids to go into that like thonk genre of music. At the time it was pretty big on TikTok and yeah, a very, very smart move for them. Following Case 143 and S Class, this really gives me those nostalgic feelings of the era of God's Menu and Thunderous. It feels like we're kind of back in that era. I really love the kind of orchestral elements to this. It seems like there's so many different instruments used, which makes it super interesting. Honestly, I thought that I didn't like this song as much as S Class, but on repeat, it really moved up in my rankings. My final ranking for La 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 was nine. We're done! That was actually so fun to go back and look at all those songs and talk about it with you all. What did you think of my rankings? I'm really interested to know what your favorite songs are, so please let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really like to do something similar with another group. I was thinking maybe one us or you guys could recommend someone for me. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> they sound like dogs. They are dogs. We need to carry the weight of expectation. This song sucks. <laughs> I need to zoom in. I can't fucking read this. <laughs> How do I zoom? Uh, oh, like, control and then. Oh, if I could just go like this on the. Um, like what? Ah. The thing is, is like all the older songs, I, I've started to like less because I'm just sick of them. Did you say everything you wanted to say about it? I think so. Well, then I can move on, mate. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> <coughs> Smashing through it. Uh, you know how to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing you know how to do properly. Oh, no. come on. Do you think that's a bit of a weird jump? I don't know. Did that seem aggressive? Always. Yeah, I know. I can see on my fucking audio, it's already 40 minutes. I'm like, what? Yeah. Fun! 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 <laughs> Was that with my whole chest? <laughs> it really showed off. <laughs> this is a little bit controversial. The first one is controversial. <laughs> Do you want to call it your proper listens? <laughs> what should I call it? <laughs> proper listens? Like I can't make every song number one. No. Like, come on. Exactly. There's Some people are going to be annoyed, but like, who gives a fuck? Thanks. Clay to... <laughs> It's the fucking alliteration. <laughs> le, le. One minute. God, mate. <laughs> no, how does it go? Tw 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 <laughs> I literally forget. Like, I look at it and then I forget. I'm like, yep, five. Five. <laughs> two, 2,000 straight. Two.
<laughs> Is this how it goes? Or? <laughs>